Jonathan Gavoni here of DraftExpress.com, uh, here in Boise once again in the D-League Showcase. Sitting here with Mark Madsen, uh, assistant coach of the Utah Flash. Uh, how's it going, Mark? So far it's going pretty well. We, we had a close first game against Tulsa. We, we lost by a few points late, late in the ball game, but in general the showcase is going great. We have a number of guys on our team that are very close to getting called up to the next level. So how has the transition gone? Uh, the natural question, obviously, for being an NBA player to a D-League assistant coach, not exactly the kind of thing that happens every day. There's a few of us that, that have done it. Darvin Ham is doing it. Vitaly Potapenko is doing it. Um, there's a number of other guys, Mark Strickland, that, that have gone from playing in the NBA to coaching in the D-League. But, like, that was a pretty abrupt, you know? Like, usually they try to hang on for a few years, play in the D-League, go make some money in Europe. You just, like, cut it off. You're like, that's it, you know? As if it was, like, your lifelong dream to coach uh, in the D-League. But to be honest with you, it, it, coaching has always been something that I've wanted to do. In fact, as I was playing throughout my career, I, I kept an electronic journal of, you know, a lot of coaching techniques that, that my coaches have used over the years, from Mike Montgomery to Phil Jackson to Flip, Randy Whitman, Kevin McHale, Dwayne Casey. So I've really tried to learn and actually record a lot of the different things that, that my own coaches did in their careers. How hard is it to be, to be a, a coach? You know, it's actually, I work for Brad Jones, you know, and, and Brad Jones demands a lot of me, okay, from scouting reports to individual work with players. There's a lot of job responsibilities, but when it comes down to it, it's very rewarding working with the players, the types of players that we have, and the types of players that are in this league. So it seems like you possibly could have continued to pursue your NBA career, but you instead decided to, to go to the D League. How tough of a decision was that for you? It was a tough decision. When the decision time came, I had, a, I had an offer to go to an NBA training camp, not on a guaranteed basis, but in a situation where I truly believe I would have made the team because there was a roster spot that was open. And then I also had an offer in Greece um, kind of a little bit later in the process. And I just thought to myself, you know, the Greece thing seemed very intriguing, but the timing wasn't quite right in the sense that I wasn't sure I wanted to be in Greece for seven to nine months at this, at this point. Even though it's a great country, it just I, I kind of wanted to take the next step and move on to the next opportunity. How long do you think it'll be until we see you on an NBA bench? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know. But right now I'm just enjoying this opportunity. I'm enjoying working with Brad, the Utah Flash. We have a great ownership group, Brant Anderson. Um, and it, it's been great to be affiliated with the Jazz and the Hawks as well. It, you know, watching the jazz practice, running the jazz system has been very educational for me. In some ways, it's similar, it has some similarities to the triangle offense of LA. Tell me about Dontel Jefferson. How do you play in the NBA, obviously, for a long time? How does he stack up as an NBA prospect? I mean, there's no question Dontel Jefferson has NBA talent. And now at this point, it's just, it's a, it's a numbers game in terms of a team having, having a roster spot. And really, a team that does have a roster spot for Dontel is going to be very fortunate. Because not only can Dontel play the point guard, but he can play the two, and he can even play the three. So here's a guy that plays three positions well. He's extremely tough, extremely tough, and he can shoot. How disappointed were you to hear that Sandiata Gaines was the guy to get the call from the Jazz instead of Dontel? You, you know, you, you always want, uh, when you work closely with a player like Dontel, you always want your guy to go. But hey, I'm, I'm happy for Sundiata Gaines. Sundiata is, is a great player. Um, he, he, he's had some good games against us. He's had some very strong games in the D League, and I wish him well in the NBA. I think he's going to have a very nice NBA career. And at the same time, I know that, you know, hey, it's a big league and it's a long season. And so there's no question that, in my mind, that Dontel is going to have a lot of opportunities in the future as well. So you're a guy that made a career out of being an energy guy, being a hustler, being able to do the, the little things for your team. How do you teach a guy in the D-League to do that? Because that would obviously help their chances, right? Yeah, and that's it's interesting, Jonathan. That's a good point, and that's something that we talk about a lot with our players, bringing energy, you know, try, trying to make plays that you can make without having the basketball in your hands. Uh, the, the other aspect of it is I was fortunate to play alongside some truly great players. Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille, Latrell Sprewell. And so one thing I found myself doing, even though, look, I, I, I was, at best, I was, I, I started a little bit in the NBA, but mostly came off the bench, mostly a bench guy. But I've been able to communicate 
to the guys what I saw a lot of these star players do, techniques that they use, strategies that they use, little tiny nuances that they implemented in their game. Outside of the Utah Flash players, who is the guy that's impressed you the most so far in the, in the D-Leagues? Outside of Utah Flash players, and, and we have, again, several guys on our team, Jonathan, that I believe will be playing at the next level soon. One player that I really like is, and he spent some time in Portland, is Anthony Tolliver. Okay, here's a guy who can shoot the three, he has tremendous size, really knows the game. Anthony is a great teammate, a great person. And he's against someone else that, that uh, has a very long and successful career ahead of him. Tell me about some other guys from the Flash that you think might be getting some looks for call-ups uh, from teams here. You know, I mean, really, when you look at our roster, we, we, have, we have five or six guys that, that really have shown the skill to do it. And again, when we talk about the D League and, and going to the next level, it's such a fine line. It's such a fine line because there might be a team with 15, there might be an NBA team with 15 guys on the roster. 15 guys. And in reality, they've got two guys that, that they won't play for whatever reason. Um, we have guys on our team with skill sets that can, bigs that can shoot. We have a lot of guys that can do a lot of things. You guys have one of the best owners in the entire D League, and Brant Anderson. What's it been like working with him? It's been absolutely great working with Brant Anderson. Brant Anderson is someone who not only loves and appreciates the game, but he comes to practice. He talks with our players. You know, he he enjoys the aspect of interpersonal communication, not only with the fans, but with the players. And I think the players appreciate that. Brant has really created an unbelievable fan experience in terms of for the fans in Orem and Provo, Utah. I've never seen a family atmosphere in a basketball venue as the atmosphere that Brand has created for the Utah Flash. As someone that doesn't go to a ton of D-League games outside of the showcase, do you think that guys here change their games for the showcase? Are they playing harder? Are they trying to show different things, playing better defense? What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I think that it's a natural reaction, a natural human tendency to come to this stage. You've got hundreds of NBA scouts and NBA personnel. You have international scouts. I do think that in some ways there's a tendency to try to elevate your game to the next level. I think some guys might press it a little bit, but in general, at this point in the season, guys are in a great flow, and guys are really going to hopefully show great and have a chance to put themselves in a great situation. One of the issues I feel the D-League has is, is a, a PR problem, in fact, that a guy gets called, gets sent down in the D-League and he takes it as a punishment, as if uh, you know, he's being demoted. What do you think the, the NBA and the D-League can do to, to change that perception? I think in the next collective bargaining agreement, there just has to be stronger language in the agreement and, and more friendly language to the developmental league because really, I, I view this as a great tool. If this would have been here when I was playing, hey, there, there were times in my career when I would have benefited tremendously from coming down here, getting repetitions, getting myself back in shape after an injury. And so I truly, I truly do view the Developmental League as a huge asset that, that, that should be embraced. Mark, you've been great to us. Thanks so much for your time, and best of luck the rest of the season, all right?